And we are live. Doesn't that sound important, Mon? <laughs> you, you sound like a talk radio guy, DK. That ain't you, man. You're a podcaster. It's different. It's so different, by the way. <laughs> it is. It, it's so different. Uh, somebody was in here, this was last week or whatever, and they're like, whenever I, was t- I started talking to him and his wife, and a guy turns to his wife and goes, listen to that. Wow, radio voice, radio voice. I'm going, I have the absolute antithesis of a radio voice. <laughs> yeah, you are. You are, <laughs> you are way different than a radio voice, DK. It's not even close to you being that because in, in radio, you have to uh, – you have to. You gotta sound like this. Gotta, yeah. Well, yeah. you do. I don't. DK. I'm on there talking <laughs> like this. Okay. And that's kind of how I want to do we, my show. You're important. I'm nobody. Oh okay? my god. So you, because you're Stop. on there and you're like 11 year NFL starter, what? Ramon Foster, <laughs> Foster, 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 Get Foster, with a monster here. truck echoes. <laughs> you 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 have to create in radios and podcasts. You just let it ride. Is that a difference right there? Podcast. You just go. And and radio, you have to create a little bit, right? That's yeah, right. You- See, Mark Lancaster says I'm too nasally to be radio, <laughs> but I actually have done a ton of radio in my yeah. life. It just it doesn't, for the most part, I think. And this is part of what's beautiful about podcasts: people just end up valuing what what are you actually saying? Well, yeah, it's that too. It, it is. Uh, there is a difference on this. You can just hang back a little bit. Heck, if me and DK just wanted to have Curse Word City on here, we could do that too. But we're not into that on this network <laughs> whatsoever. Listen to Dolly. Listen. Sorry, that's that was such an insult. Yeah, you, you're the one that married this person. <laughs> They're laughing at you. <laughs> Dolly's losing it in the back. Oh. <laughs> They're laughing at you over there. <laughs> that is for hilarious. Married this loser. Uh, but Sticky B is right. Dolly is a bad influence. It's so true. <laughs> it is so Big true. Guy. Let's let's get this intro going here before more of you get in trouble. That is so good. Y'all ready, man? Let's roll. <laughs> I hate all of you, just so that we get this show started on the proper foot. All right? That's so good. Is that understood? Is this a great way to build an audience, right? It is, DK. Oh, that is such a good way to build an audience. Dolly's like, yeah, more violence, please. Uh, That was a good bell, by the way. Thank you, man. No, I felt like yesterday was good, too. But I'll take today. If yesterday wasn't as good as you thought... I'll take the bell today, too. I actually thought yesterday was pretty solid, but I didn't get any congratulations on that, though, DK. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah, I, I, I guess. Oh. Matt Bunk is my only fan, apparently. He just says, I like you, DK. Hey, you, you, all you need is one. That's it. All you need is one. You know one thing that we can always do, though, Moan? Talk to, to me. To unify all of us? To make yeah. sure that we're all on the same side? But what, what is that, DK? Right there, pal. I knew it was coming. We were too good yesterday. No, and you know what's another thing we can do? What's that? That hump day. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. I love the fact that you guys remind us of the, of the chefs. Hit the bell and hump day. And whenever Dolly decides to rage is out, DK. Yep, exactly. Steelers versus uh Rams, and that is a 4.02 p.m. kickoff Eastern time. I'll be out in Los Angeles flying out on Saturday to cover that in the one of the world's strangest structures, yeah. The SoFi Stadium. Um, have you seen that thing, Moan? I have not seen it in person. I heard no, it was no, no. built just, underground. Just, just oh picture. yeah, I, it, it, it looks like what what it would look like if the aliens came to take us all. It does it really does? Any other place where the aliens will probably start to take us in California? Like, <laughs> let's be honest about that too, DK. <laughs> uh, yeah, man, that is a fascinating stadium. It's what everybody else is is dreaming of when they start to build their new places, man, all the technology they got in it. I'm not sure if this was a lie or if it's true, but based on where it's at in California, they have inside HVAC or because they're built underground and they have the openings that wind can go through. Is it true or not true that they don't have HVAC? It's, I don't think they need it. It's they don't when, need it. Yeah. It's, it's because it's so low under that canopy. 
Uh, it's a lot like Dodger Stadium, which is which is obviously a much older technology, to say the least, yeah, since it was built yeah, in the 50s. Yeah. Uh, but Dodger Stadium is built into a hillside. A lot, okay. a lot of people know that. Uh, when you exit out the back of the stadium, you exit out the top of the stadium. Okay. Isn't that weird? That is pretty weird. So you're well, you're walking are, up. You, yeah, you we like for media parking for Dodgers games when the Pirates are playing the Dodgers, you park above the roof. Didn't okay. I know that? Oh yeah, it's crazy. And then you take an elevator down to the press box. I had no idea that was the case right there. The, see, this is that radio stuff, DK, that you did all those years and reporting on stuff because you're a big J journalist out there, unlike myself. Oh, yeah, I, I'm trying. You know, I'm trying. You're, you're that trying counts. To save my face here. Yeah, I am. You know, I'm here for you, DK. That's all. Yeah, they feed off wind gusts. That's what Don and says here. See? I, yeah. It's California. You can't do that in Tennessee. We well, can't feed off wind gusts. That's what doggone sure. Uh, Tennessee's putting its own couple of billion into their their new stadium over Whoa. there uh, on uh, the other on the other side of uh, Nashville's River. What's the name of the river? I don't I never remember that. I see the river. Uh, all the, time. Uh, the the river. Uh, the yeah, Tennessee what's... Tennessee River. That's the Tennessee River. Yeah, it's the Tennessee River. No wonder I can't remember it. What the hell, DK? That's my home <laughs> state, man. What are we doing here, man? It's crazy. I saw you hesitate there. You if I can, it, because I was like, what are you talking about? If I can remember the, uh, what is it, Mahanaga, uh, Mahanagalea? <laughs> Golly, never mind. The Mono River. I'm done. Here. I liked yours better, the Monagahalea. Yeah, no, Monagahalea. It sounds like it's flowing through the Middle East on its way to Pittsburgh. Hey, enough from the peanut gallery behind the scenes, DK. You hear Jeez. all this? Giggles McGee back there. Uh, AI bot wants to know, presumably this is an actual human. Uh, am I still a member? How do I know? You do know because you're, 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 you're in you're green. green. Yeah. yeah you're so, green. so you're all good. Yeah. I just saw uh, somebody say DK from mayor. Uh, is that a world we want in Pittsburgh? I'd be the worst mayor. Good. I tell people this all the time. They, oh yeah. You're always promoting this and that and whatever. I'd be the worst mayor. They'd get rid of me in a day. Good. I'd be, I'd be militant. I would just say, change yeah. this, change yeah, that. Who is anybody? Can't yeah, it's just <laughs> just it would just be so bad. <laughs> you you out here cutting deals under the table, DK is what you're saying. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Be, be. I would just say this, I want this fixed. Boom, gone. You out. See. Randy Wagner says, Hey Moan, what's your prediction on the percentage of Steelers fans in SoFi Stadium? Uh for a road game? For a road game. Because you you played a road game out there. That was the soccer stadium, but yeah. Man, in California, with the Steelers coming out there with that team, they won a Super Bowl recently, but they probably have Steeler jerseys underneath their original jersey. It wouldn't shock me if you saw a 50-50 split and maybe more because some of those Rams, new Rams fans, are probably easy to cheer for the Steelers. Uh, that could very well be a home crowd for us. Uh, I have no questions about that. The West Coast is always like that. Most people will tell you when it comes to California teams, they'd rather be doing something else than being a fan of a football team. What the, the way the pattern that I've picked up on over the years is that the further the Steelers fly west, mm -hmm. the more of more it's seen by fans out there in general across the coast as an opportunity to go see the Steelers because they're quote unquote nearby. So yeah. all those fans that you see coming to Steelers games in Arizona, Nevada, and other parts of California, obviously a massive state unto itself. Oh, the Steelers are here. And by the way, it's a massive stadium. Yeah, it is. Okay. So we can get tickets. We're just going to go. And, and that's essentially what it is. And of course, like you said, th their teams have been kind of bad as of late until, I mean, 49ers have been consistent. They have real fans. Wouldn't you say that, DK? Mm -hmm. San Francisco area have real fans. When we get down to L.A., oh. it's they, a don't even care. They, they don't care that they have one team, let alone two. Unless it's the Dodgers. The Dodgers. La well, La Lakers, too. Lakers, and, Dodgers, and USC. Football. And I would say, I would say, it's funny thing about the Kings is the Kings have their fan base. Okay, since especially since they won a couple of Stanley Cups uh, in the past decade, but it's not a massive group. Okay, it's just not. Right. It, it's not the way Dodgers, Lakers are, and so forth. Yeah, no doubt about it, man. Um, yeah. That, so yes, you're right, Francesco. No fire to a Canada chance at SoFi. I, I just I gotta say this too before we go into the Hey Mon segment. DK is this. We talked a little bit after the show was done yesterday. This was me, not DK, so don't blame him. And some of the stuff that's going on with the Matt Canada thing, I know we don't care about people's feelings, 
but it does get a little bit just like y'all y'all playing mean girls with the chance on government buildings and at different venues and on the road and <laughs> he's still not fired no so do the chants continue dk or do they stop at a certain point or will here's one a, a question i have start if he wins is it the same sentiment go ask the hockey fans is my answer oh, everything my that gosh. you just described everything started with the hockey fans on the government steps the national portrait gallery in washington dc that was hockey fans leaving the game after the penguins beat the capitals they're standing on the portrait gallery steps they always do this they do a let's go pens chant they kind of yeah. in a playful way they jeer the capitals fans as they're leaving and going to their cars and look they're going through two other chants and they're like all right now what all right yeah. let's do the mad canada one okay so they do the mad canada one but all of it's been hockey fans all of us been hockey fans. It's it's funny to see. Y'all will cool, say that, which is cool. You know okay. what? If if that unites us as a fan base, I'll take it. But uh, it's fascinating to see that. And again, I told you guys if there was anything that was going to happen, it was going to happen on the bye week, and absolutely nothing happened unless the 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 report about uh, Desmond King being cut. That's the only firing you have. Yeah, that's about it. I mean, Desmond King got, by the way, uh, was. He's either cut or he's close to being cut, or they're waiting on a trade. But yeah, oh, he did. Uh, well, it's it's. I'm seeing that officially did it, but I'm not also seeing okay. it on their their uh, official transaction sheet. Yeah, they sign. They're, they're going to sign Darius Rush a corner in his place. Uh, there's nothing really to say about Desmond King other than that they never took him seriously from the moment he arrived. I don't know if there was something, Moan. I'm sure you've seen this it's, sort of thing happen that where you just say you just look at him right away and you go, uh, uh-uh. uh. He's I've seen him here in Nashville and I've seen him play against the Titans both uh, DK and he's a guy that plays a role well, but if his role's not playing in his favor, then it looks obviously bad is what I've seen. His all pro came from kick returning. I think he had a real good start to his career and just really hit his ceiling as far as the expectation of what his play is supposed to be. And here's the other thing too. When you sign a veteran guy like this, you can cut them because their salaries is not guaranteed. So he may not be the only veteran guy that comes in after uh, week one that you sign and cut. Uh, guys have to fit in, and if they're going to sign you as a veteran, you have to immediately have an impact on what you're doing, especially if you are off the street free agent. He didn't live up to that billing, and that's all I've seen from that too. W were you hoping he do well? Yeah, but if he does well, that also pushes um, Joey Porter Jr. back. I just I, I keep looking at this game and this opportunity that this team had coming out of the bye week to to go a different route with these rookies and to get them involved. And you know, remember all remember how excited we all were about that draft class? Oh, no doubt, no doubt. And the draft class itself has done nothing to disappoint us. No, absolutely nothing, DK. No. <laughs> absolutely nothing, man. How about uh, Nick, Nick like Nick Herbig is another case, okay? Nick Herbig, we were ready to crown him well, yes okay and not yeah. without cause he was making real life football plays now i get it he's got tj watt and alex highsmith ahead of him but he's a football player can we figure out some other usage for him i don't know teams. i don't know that's it but you know that though dk this those young guys are gonna cut their teeth on special teams especially an outside linebacker mm -hmm. or young safety like that's the thing about they it can and move yeah yeah you better pick and move and find some value there heck alex highsmith did the exact same thing and now he's in a starter role those, those are the dudes you have to pay when you're coming up in this league and again that was probably part of my reasoning for saying i needed dan more steel because here's the other thing, too. Now, you, you guys had me thinking about this big time yesterday. Like, golly, am I wrong to not say, you know, Broderick should be the starter at left tackle? I was questioning myself after the show. And that's why I knew it was a good show yesterday, too, DK. I was doing the same thing, actually. I was, I was <laughs> yeah. thinking about it. But here's the thing. There's always a catch-22 with this type of stuff. And here's why. A lot of the times, people, and not everybody, people, right? will say, man, I hate this generation. They get everything thrown to them, and when are you ever going to earn something? Until it involves your sports team and the guy that you like, and until you think they may be better. What if this method of um, doing things a slow way with Joey Porter Jr. and with Broderick Jones means a better career for them? You know what I'm saying? 
in, in a world of I need, I need, I need, and give me, give me, give me right now. Well, there was an article I saw as far as the league goes right now that the quarterback play is down in the league because everybody drafts a first round guy and they make him a starter, including Kenny Pickett, including Kenny Pickett. You got a bunch of dudes in this league that's become so microwave, just style of play and culture in the NFL that I think it's starting to hurt in certain players. Mac Jones being one of those guys. Tua, until his coach got it together. We're looking at Zach Wilson fall into that conversation. Heck, even Kyler Murray. Look around the league as a Justin Fields. Even though you love the talent, a lot of those dudes would have probably did a whole lot better to sit behind a veteran for a year or two before taking over. And that's kind of what I feel like it's okay to kind of put – Joey Porter Jr. on the back burner for a little bit and make him want it, make him learn it, make him earn it. The same way I feel about Broderick. Tyler Longhurst brings up a, a good point. Anything that's related to media, I'm happy to jump on. He says, I don't understand why Mike Tomlin seems so agitated yesterday, especially when he was asked about opposing receivers tearing up the secondary. It's the truth. Why won't he acknowledge this and change? For anybody who didn't see the exchange, the, the question that was asked by a reporter was very fair. They just said, there's there's a, a clear pattern of the other team's top receiver having really big games against you. Okay, that the Steelers rank as one of the one of the worst teams in that specific regard. And we've seen that. That's not that's not some well, anyway, so Tomlin doesn't doesn't appreciate the question and refers to it as an obscure statistic, which is it's, it's the opposite of obscure. Obscure is like that, you know, the guy is really good at catching the ball with a certain hand. You know, a certain situation yeah, and whatever. Yeah. It wasn't obscure. He didn't want to answer it. I don't know that he was agitated. I've seen that description of yesterday. I've been around this guy a lot. I've seen when he's legitimately agitated. And that wasn't yesterday. Okay. Yeah. He just heard he heard something. He doesn't want to talk about the offense. Okay. Yeah. You guys remember in Las Vegas when I asked him the same question three times in a row about the offense remember this yeah 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 i do what was his answer all three times i don't know, I don't know. Uh, yeah because yep. he didn't want to talk about it he doesn't want to talk about the offense well here's the thing too about the so we're talking about the opposing team's number one wide receiver getting their numbers like yeah. Devonte did yes what happened in that game against them i believe they they, they won the steelers, the steelers won still that game. won yes there is a method of play that says you can you can get yours but everybody else can't and that's what Devontae did, and they lost. Like Las Vegas lost. And Devontae had great numbers, but your team won. There is the idea of bend but don't break. There is the idea that, look, we can try to make sure that he doesn't get his numbers and then somebody else tear you apart. Which one would you feel better about, the guy that's a bona fide guy getting his numbers but you lose or you stopping the number one wide receiver and your team actually lose, DK? Yeah, I think it's the it's – the polar opposite of the yeah. way someone like Nick uh like uh Belichick for for years would say we're not we're going to take away your top guy okay and they would do everything and anything they could New England to say right well, that's it we're we'll let so and so beat us we're not letting Antonio Brown beat us or we're not going to let Le'Veon Bell beat us. Mean, you know meanwhile those guys still got theirs anyway yeah uh John so, Harbaugh does the same thing he does you okay, said Patriots he, yeah yeah, yeah. Pa Patriots and no, 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 but Patriots and Ravens, they, they've both taken that nope. same approach. Not every coach has that. Some will say, we'll let you, you know, we're not going to stop Devontae Adams, okay? Yep. He's going to he's gonna get his, but we're going to, you know, we'll play against the rest of you. Yeah, the rest of y'all, no, you will not eat against us. The only outlier on that one, DK, is I don't know if anybody can understand what in the world happened in Houston. Maybe, I, Just I don't know. It was, everything about that was bad. Everything about it was bad. But if you look at the other loss, the 49ers, all right, we we'll see what they do to other teams. That, that's been happening for them until last week. And even then, they could have or maybe should have won that game, uh, and they lost because of a kicker misses it. Yeah, Ash says, why ask a question that you already know the answer to? I, I wouldn't have known the answer to that question. No, no. no. There's nothing we, wrong with a question. We've been by the way, that. he doesn't get to call the terms on what questions get asked. He just doesn't. Just like we don't call the shots on what his answers are. So that's the point right there. You have to ask the question. Yeah, but you under And those hard, let's ask the hard question moments that people want, you know that you're probably not going to get an answer though, right, DK? And we've had this Doesn't conversation matter. before. Yeah. Why do you think I asked the same question three times of the man in Las Vegas? And mm. we could have done it all day 
And he yeah. was going to keep giving me the same non-answer. Doesn't take away my right to ask it. It's what it, it was the subject that I was writing about for my column. I really yeah. wanted to have an answer on what he thought about his offense that day. You know, and actually, I don't even yeah. think they were that bad. Right, right. But of course, that's just what it is. He just didn't want to talk about it. You know, uh, Patrick Peterson has failed to suit up all season, it seems, Mark Lancaster opines. Is it the learning curve of the complexity of this defensive scheme? I don't know, he's just gotten older, right? He's yeah. gotten older, and uh, the role that he's playing might not be the best for what this defense requires of him. He may need to move inside, DK. And who's to say it? Coach T won't allow that to happen in the next week or two? That, that's what we have to understand, too. This is a fluid thing this season, y'all. That's, that's all I have to say. And um, by, by the way, Slim, I do not think that. Okay. Hey, Mo, do you think they will extend that Canada's Jeez. contract? It's yet to be seen. But if you get a first round win in the playoffs, you willing? Oh, boy. I know. I know, DK. There is no circumstance <laughs> under which you would want another season of that guy. I don't care what, what magic he's able to upturn here. <laughs> that you know? behooves you, DK. Different ways to help the show, says the boss. Like, that's free. Subscribe, that's also free. Become a member. Not free, but not much. 99 cents a month. Buy merchandise, and that is just to look good. She's good. She's savvy. I guess if she's going to laugh behind the scenes, she can be creative with her evil mind too, right, DK? <laughs> <laughs> Diabolical laughter <laughs> off in the distance here. Uh, yes, uh, DK. Uh, Guys, when we come back, we're gonna we're gonna embark upon the the only segment that matters. And that's hey Moan. I got some real good ones too. Let's do this, DK. At DK Pittsburgh Sports, we take pride in coverage that connects our city's fans to their favorite teams. Now that connection's stronger than ever. Introducing our all-new state-of-the-art app. Find expert inside reporting and original podcasts. Check live box scores, track the latest stats. Chat it up with our community of thousands of fans, all in one place. The new app from DK Pittsburgh Sports. Coverage that connects. Your favorite barber asks, who calls the shots for three chefs? And, of course, the barber is asking a trick question because it's actually the barber himself today who oh. calls that shot. At the Get-Go Cafe and Market, quality is at the core of every menu item. Three expert chefs. Fine-tune every detail so that every sub, burger, salad, wrap, drink, and app is crafted for what they refer to as crave-ability. Order your favorite entry at the Get-Go Cafe and Market today. Better believe it. Donnan's feeling good about this game, Moan. Uh, I would hope so. Coming out of this um, bye week, uh, you, you expect the same one to be healthier than they were, but also understand the travel expect, uh, expectation of this weekend, too, and, and really – Harness that and take advantage of it. And also, you were behind the game when it comes down to what you guys having to buy last week in Cincinnati and uh, Baltimore. Every team in the North won last week. Yes. You're playing catch up. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, take the step, but find flow offensively of what we're looking for more than, more than anything. Puka Nakua mm -hmm. and Cooper Cup. Figure out which one you're going to shut down and get to the quarterback, DK. Or just decide that Cooper Cup is going to destroy you and you're going to stop everybody else. That's fine with me. I'd you know, rather, I much rather see him get his number than Puka Nakua actually be effective and make them win the game. Can't mm -hmm. have that, DK. Absolutely. Francesco brings up a, an interesting point. He says, can I just say one thing? Is the Browns defense more talented than the Steelers, or is it just the coaching? I think Terrell Austin doesn't know how to use his personnel. A lot of people are singing, and, and rightly so, about Cleveland's defense. Oh, man. Uh, I have a, my own little Cleveland defensive stat for you. Talk Name the only quarterback to throw for more than 200 yards against the Browns this year. That's Kenny Pickett? That would be Kenny Pickett. <laughs> One thing that gets really overlooked, I think, through the Steelers' first five games is that they ran into some serious defenses. Yeah, they did. Okay? Very serious defenses. Uh, disruptive, and maybe even the kinds that can kind of knock you on your rear end and force you to have to recalibrate a little bit the way San Francisco did. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no doubt. And to answer your question too, Francesco, yes, they have a very talented defense. And Greg Williams, uh, that's their head. That's a defensive coordinator, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, no, no, uh, it's not. It's not him. It's give me one second. I got it right here, DK. Their defensive coordinator is Jim Schwartz. 
That's right. Schwartzy has the personnel that he loves to play with, which is why he took two years of not, and if I'm not mistaken, one of them here in Nashville, two of them here in Nashville to figure out where he wants to go. They have two good outside rushes, which we saw him beat Miles Garrett and Zadar Smith, and they got a bunch of role players. They he, he has the defense that he wants, and mm-hmm. when you have the personnel that you want, you're comfortable in your play calling. If I was to ask you guys, is this defense the person, all of the personnel that you want? You probably say, no, nah, I, I love a corner. I love a linebacker. We need another D tackle. Well, guess what? Cleveland has all of those things in house. And when Jim Schwartz took that job, he knew exactly what he was getting himself into. That's just, let's not make one better than the other. He in a good situation with his personnel. Robert Gearhart asks, hey, Moan, did you like playing in New Orleans? Uh, I think I lost two times down there. Yeah, but you guys were unbelievable. We were, we were. in that second one. Hey. Okay, that was that the, the offense. I don't know that I've seen the Steelers' offense move like that. And no. I understand it was a lot of AB. Okay, but it was a lot of everything. Everybody. Yes, yes, yeah. So, Robert, I loved it. I hated the noise, but I love flourishing in that noise, though, too, because it really makes you – you know how you see the big picture, Robert, and then everything does this? That's what happens in New Orleans if you're the right type of team and we had the right type of squad to flourish there. We just came up short because there was a little push-off or something that happened that they didn't call a flag on or they did call a flag. It, I love it because it makes everybody focus. Jake says, are we excited to see Deontay back out there? He's out yes. there for practice. And Deontay, by the way, reiterated today as if hell yeah wasn't enough. Last week, he reiterated today that he will be playing Sunday in Los Angeles. Got to love it. And, and, and let's say this too. What, what if this offense evolves a little bit more because of him? Again, we talked about Jim Schwartz and the Cleveland Brown defense, DK. Does personnel matter a lot, DK? Yes. The answer is yes. Yes, it does, man. Uh, and I'm glad to see Deontay back. I got one from Ramel real quick. By the way, he was looking for the merch link, and I saw you put that in. Put it up, DK. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, he said, I'm just wondering, has there ever been a defensive coordinator that made the switch to offensive coordinator and been successful? Great question. I don't have the answer to that, but I'll tell you this. More times than not, defensive coaches go to the offensive side of the ball to cut their teeth. Because if you understand how offenses work, then you have the ability to be better at your job. So that happens a lot in the league. Uh, Will Gay, I saw as a player, go straight to the wide receivers when he was there. Remember when he was intern? Yeah. Mm-hmm. He went to the wide receivers as a DB. He needed to understand how those dudes break off routes and run their routes and stuff like that. That happens all the time. That's also so him. It is so him. It really is. <laughs> well, I said it's Coach Tomlin put him over there for that reason, and now I think he's got a position job at a college somewhere. It, how that works, huh? Barber, it, Barber comes through with five gift memberships that's very much appreciated and never taken for granted we love you barbara the same thing goes for our friend stella who comes in with 10 memberships uh thank you uh, on behalf of the 15 people that are picking up those freebies make sure that you're set to accept gifts uh, on youtube poke around and see how that works boss coming through with commentary again 1128 members active that's going the wrong direction, and that's yeah. why. Because we're, whenever those gift memberships expire, you got to renew it yourself. If you want to stay on uh, as one, she thinks that the two of us need to work harder, Moan. Boo ha 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 ha! I know this stop, <laughs> man. DK, we're gonna have to do something with her, man. She's gonna have to go to the. She she gotta go to the other side of the store. Or we can make like an evil rage emoji version of her. I got no problem with that. I know some yeah. people that can do some stuff. She's not the only one with that talent. With the, the emoji talent? Yeah. <gasps> do we just... Not this again. <laughs> just on the and yeah, we actually can. <laughs> <laughs> what the <laughs> heck is that? <laughs> Look at all of us. I love it, DK. We'll, we'll, we'll be the Hollywood Squares here shortly. We will be. <laughs> to the <All> shadows. Right. <laughs> Chris says, uh, hey, Moan, if the Steelers get in the playoffs and even win a playoff game, scoring less than 20 points. Is there a chance that we don't fire Matt Canada in the offseason? Uh, I didn't think Bruce Arians was all that bad before we moved on to him. When you know it's time for a change, you know. Uh, this this group needs a little bit more excitement, a little bit more creativity, and 
Uh, they need to be a little bit more, more methodical. Uh, I actually thought coming from college, Matt Canada was going to bring that to this group, but being a first-time offensive coordinator, DK. He, he hasn't. <laughs> being a first-time offensive coordinator in the NFL, uh, that's a tall task when you hadn't been in this world for a very long time. Well, uh, what's next, Ask, uh, Hey, Moan, I saw Roger Goodell was extended. Would he really put a Super Bowl in London before Pittsburgh? N not not anytime soon. I, I just can't see it. The time changed, y'all. Like, I was just over there. The kickoff was 2.30 in the afternoon in London, okay? That was 8.30 Central. Y'all not trying to watch the Super Bowl at 9.30 in the morning or uh, 11 o'clock in the morning, mid-morning, 12 o'clock kickoff? Y'all don't want that. No, so that's it, tough. It, it's going to take a lot to get that done. Again, DK said he dangles it out there for business purposes. Slim says, hey, Moan. And DK, do you ever see the NFL maybe putting a franchise in Canada, like in Toronto, instead of across the pond? Well, forgetting across the pond, I'll take this one as a, Go ahead. As a guy who spends half the year in Canada. Uh, the answer to that is no. And it has less to do with the viability because a Toronto NFL franchise would be immensely successful. That's one of the biggest markets in North America. Yeah. And it's exploding with growth. However, the CFL matters up north. Okay, the Grey Cup matters. Uh, preserving a trophy that's a lot older than the Super Bowl, a lot older than the NFL. CFL predates the NFL. A lot of people don't realize that. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. it's been around for a long time. So when uh, people in, in, in my beloved second city in Winnipeg, you know, Blue Bombers won a couple of years in a row just now, it is, they're not thinking of that as some sort of second prize. Okay, no. winning the Grey Cup is right up there for them with the Stanley Cup. So Toronto fans, they're interesting. Moan, you and I have talked about this. Yeah, we Meaning have. Toronto people, they they pick fans. and They pick teams in the NFL. Uh, they love it down here. They come down here for games. Tons of Canadians. My wife and I talk Ooh. about this all the time. And you got to think they're right next to Buffalo if they want to come across and watch a game. I mean, that's not a far drive at all. No, a big percentage of, of the Bills fan base, the Bills season ticket base, comes from southern Ontario, mostly from the uh, the Hamilton area as opposed to way up, you know, further up in Toronto. But yeah. they come over. They they are Bills fans. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Bob Schreiner says, fellas, what, what are you handing out to the kids in costumes, and what do you hope you have some left over? What's Man. your favorite Halloween candy? Uh, Kit Kats. Kit Kats are phenomenal. They're not too sweet. It's just enough. And it's like, all right, I'm done with it whenever you're done with it. Kit Kats probably. Well, we'll be well, handing that's out. That's actually a good way to think of Kit Kats. I hadn't thought of that. When you're done with a Kit Kat, you're really done. That's like, good. you don't go, where's another one? No, you do not at all, do you? You know what I'm saying? No. You can break in half. You can break the, the sticks. You can do whatever you want to, and then you're good to go and satisfy. Reese's is probably my favorite. I was going to say, if I was truly yeah. a shameful parent, I would have been that father who told the kids, Ask for Reese's. <laughs> what, what I hope is left, nothing. I, I Man, of course, and I want to give out as much as we possibly can so they can run their parents up the wall. That's it. That's it. Justin Work comes in with five memberships. That's appreciated. Justin's always there for us. Mike Hoover says, hey, Moan, as a guy who played on the line at a high level for a long time, how would you go about slowing down Aaron Donald? Ooh, this is our prize question for the day here. That is a whoa. Yeah. This is real. Like, I got to get a ding out of this. That's, that's, that's terrible. That's good. Uh, they, they, I heard Dolly, too. She said that was terrible by you, DK. And she's Awful not lying. Bell that was Awful terrible. Bell here. Don't use Glenn Thomas as your shield. I'm always Absolutely hiding not. behind Glenn Thomas whenever I get in trouble. Uh, with Aaron Donald, this is what you have to do. Uh, try to make sure you have a good run game first. You try to beat them down as much as you possibly can and get into those third and short, third and five or less. Uh, because if you let him line up and tee off on you, that is his specialty all day long. There will be some situations where you have to go for it on first and 10, and guess what you have to do? Get him to stop, understand his angles, understand that if he wants to go around my left side, which is the side, of, you guide him to that left side and don't let him turn the corner on you. If he's a guy that want to run through you, if it's me, all right, come through, run through me. But I can't let him make that quick inside move or that quick outside move to where he gets my edge. That's where I would be with a guy like Aaron Donald. I, you fight him. It's essentially what you do with poise. I, so just to make sure that I understand this, this is in the event that you're one-on-one -on -one with him. Yes. Your basic mindset there is, 
I have to do whatever I have to do to at least be in his way. Be in his way. Because if you watch his rush, he is so <clears> good <throat> about angles that if he gets that corner and his size and his bend, he's right there at the quarterback. Okay? And if he beats you inside quick, with his leverage and strength, it's hard to stop that. So if you keep him from going inside on a rush, perfect. As long as he's going around my outside arm, I live to fight another day. The moment that he decides to uh, cut off the edge of my corner, you're cooked. That's just how it is. And you tell your quarterback, step up. But the best way to beat Aaron Donald is in the run game. And that's double teaming the heck out of him on every single play. I covered games of his in, in, in college. And the quotes that we would get from the opposing coaches after they'd face him were just, what, what did you want us to do? We put three, <laughs> not two, three people on him. Yeah. And, and it was a, the thing about the pit defense at the time was he was it. He was it. Okay. And there was still no answer. They would just gang up, and he would find a way to either, like you said, angles, slither through, He's or strong. overpower. One way or another, one of those two ways, he was going to get back. And once he got that air, yeah. once he – this, and you, you referenced this too. The close on the quarterback was like a cobra. So fast. It's, so fast. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. You, you hope that you can size him, which is what Matt Filer did. I missed that game in Pittsburgh. He sized him. Matt's a strong guy. If you got a guy that's strong enough and got a good base, you fight him all day long and understand he's going to give you three plays. He's going to have to take a break, and he's come back on third down the next time around. Uh, but I've a guy, you got to guide him to where he want to go and just push him through and understand that, look, I can live with a pressure. I can't live with him getting a sack on me. Pressures we live with and be comfortable with taking on pressures too. You're putting when you got the greats, DK, there is no shame in saying we're gonna manage this as a group. Is it wrong to say that? Do you think somebody uh, said I'm managing Reggie White? I don't recall the Steelers facing Aaron Donald and and going single team on him, by the way. Exactly. You know, for the most part. I mean, you have to you have to get some kind of assistance. And and one of the things that has a lot of people concerned this week is that Mason Cole hasn't been playing well and uh, he's gonna need help. Okay. So that's where you tell them up front, if y'all want a nice day at the office in L.A. and see the sunshine, you better control the doggone line of scrimmage. Because if you don't, and that crowd will switch sides on you and get a little bit louder in that stadium, it just does because you're on the road, guess what? Do your job and control the line of scrimmage and move the ball on the ground. Leverage asks, hey, Moan, how much input does Mike Tomlin give to the offense? So what was it like when you played? It's circumstantial, and more than anything, it's because of the defenses that you're going to play. If it's a trench monster of a defense, then he may have some suggestion because the defense is Coach Tomlin's thing. Hey, you guys should probably do that in this situation. But for the most part, he's mostly hands off. But you guys understand, it's just like an offensive line coach. Like, they they know how to coach a position, or they are the run game coordinators for a reason. He's going to have his touches on it, but he has no real say-so unless he's trying to help them understand what defenses are doing. But uh, I got one right here, DK, if you hadn't you already one? clicked it. Yeah, I got a real good one because here's where we're at right now. Uh, you got we'll, we'll do slim no, and then no, I'll just, get my next slim one. Just, no, I, uh, I don't think I don't think you're gonna see a quarterback get moved. I really uh, don't I don't see that either. I, yeah. I just don't, man. But here's the thing that asking about Aaron Donald. You guys mm -hmm. got one too. Oh <laughs> Brent Harmon asked the question: better game on Sunday, Donald or what? You know. TJ is at a level right now um, where I have a feeling that you're going to see more teams do what happened in Houston. And a lot of things went wrong in Houston. And TJ was the first to say, and he said it immediately after the game, he said, I did not play well. He did not have his best game in terms of getting back to CJ Stroud. However, Stroud moved the ball quickly. And I think you're going to see a lot of teams say, listen, we're just going to give him the intentional walk. Okay? We are not... We're not going to try to fend this guy off and buy ourselves time in the backfield. We're going to build a scheme that just renders him moot because we're going to move the ball. Think about Ben in his final year. That, yeah. that where your, your release of the football, snap to release time is in the two-second range. That's what you might be seeing. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, I'll say this. 
in these type of situations, same way that we saw Ben and Peyton and Ben and Eli and Ben and Tom have those friendly, I want to have better games than you moments. This is the matchup you kind of want to see. And it's even better because Aaron Donald's tied, like literally to Pittsburgh. Uh, that This should be a good defensive showing from either team this uh, this weekend right here, DK, if you want to see some legendary stuff. I AD hope. is AD is Pittsburgh to the core. Just so everybody knows that he still lives here year round. Uh, he he didn't just commit to Pitt's weight room. He built it he from it. scratch. Okay, wow. that that weight room that, that that they put in in the back of their half of the building over there. Yeah, it's the Aaron Donald weight room. Yeah, yeah, and and this leads me since we're talking about rushers, DK to Chris. Chris says, hey, mom, what did Ben, what did you say to Ben after you gave up a sack? Not much. I look at him, he look at me, and that just be it. Sacks are part of doing business, right, DK? If he knows you tried. Yeah. If he's not getting blown up, and one of my biggest steps in my respect, even more for seven, was the, the nose break situation. He never mentioned it. It would be times in a game where it's close, and emotions are high. And he'd be like, fellas, I need time. You give me time. I got you. But I need you guys up front to give me time. And you know what happened more times than not, DK? Mm. When we gave him that little bit of time, he looked at us and I said, I told you guys. But I also knew you could do it. Ramel says that Matt Canada is the candy corn of the NFL. <laughs> what What is what is the worst Halloween thing? Is it in Stop. fact candy corn? I love licorice. Black licorice is the worst candy. Candy corn is it's it's in a world of its own. It's, okay. it's, it's nighttime TV at your grandma's house. Is what candy corn is. It's just there. See, the problem is, is that I, I've been doing the trick or treat thing. My, you know, my trick or treating goes back to a time when they were still passing out apples. You know. Yeah, no. and I'd be like, you'd be like Apple, like, look, we get what you're trying to send here, this message, my friend, my neighbor, but yeah. we didn't come here looking for an apple, okay? Or toothbrushes. Yeah, <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Who does that? Like the miniature toothbrushes? Yeah. Hey, candy corn is only meant for house displays. She says whoppers. Or what? Whoppers or what? The worst. The worst, she says. Yeah, right. Dolly, the chocolate cover malt things? That's the one, yeah. Those are goat level. <laughs> she, he loves them. Yes. With the, like, like candy corn should not be handed out at all. Whoppers are elite level candy. I'm, I'm willing. Candy corn looks cute. See, I think, yeah, candy uh, corn looks like Halloween, feels it like looks Halloween. Cute. It looks cute. It's the only time of year you'd ever venture to eat it. Oh my gosh, y'all are so wrong. With them in bowls. Hang on, she's yelling, trying to yell through my microphone. I'll just put her on here. Go ahead. <laughs> Make yourself heard. I'm just saying you just separate the house with them. You don't have to eat them. And that's what I'm saying. Also, like you can you can candy corn is display candy. And of course, if it's there, I'm gonna nibble off the top and take the middle section. And then like, oh yeah, it's a nice piece of sweet piece of candy. That's what candy corn is. No, you, you shouldn't eat it at all because it just tastes like sweet wax. It's not uh, it's black licorice is the worst candy, and that's that's not up for debate. Candy corn is 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 solid. Yeah, we're yeah. throwing her out again. Man, disagree to disagree. Bob Schreiner <laughs> says, "DK, are there any spots in LA that are a must for you in Los Angeles?" Yes, Los Angeles International Airport, affectionately known as LAX, is the best way to get out. I'm not an LA guy. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't have any problem with it. I just don't. Like, I don't, I don't get it. I, yeah. All I, I, I look around Los Angeles and I just say to myself, well, who chooses this? Like, who says, yeah, this is the place for me. You yeah. know what? You can't see past your nose from all the pollution. You can't drive more than two, three miles. And there's no way to get somewhere without driving. I, I will say this. I'm more of a, you hate the beach too. I'm DK? not a be I'm not a beach guy. Okay, I would much rather go to uh, San Diego than Los Angeles. Oh, San Diego's got all the personality in the world. Yeah, San it's a hundred times better. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Hog, one year I only gave up one sack, but just so you know, that is a real stat. That was uh, 2017. 2017. Yep, twenty seventeen. One sack. I think no yeah. penalties either. Yeah, we have uh, fishing for trout. Says I love candy corn. Cat yeah. Nanada says candy corn sucks. It's elite level, DK. It is. 
Joe Yenzer says, why is TJ so res disrespected from the national media? Okay, here we go again. I, I get media, okay? First of all, when you're talking about who t who's disrespecting TJ, you're not talking about national media because media means reporters, okay? You're talking about pro football focus, which is not media in any way, shape, or form. It's a company of freelance geeks that's owned by Chris Collinsworth. They are not reporters. They're not in locker rooms. They're not breaking news or anything like that. They're watching film. They're giving their views of it. So TJ is not disrespected by the national media. TJ yeah. was the defensive player of the year. You know who votes for defensive player of the year? Writers. The Real writers. Reporters. Actual media. Yeah. Yeah. And they'll be mad if TJ gets it, but TJ's having that type of year again. I hope he wins it again, just so we can stop seeing that Miles Garrett crossover stuff. He did it again this past weekend, and you know what he got out of it, DK? Hmm. Chasing the running back, didn't even tackle him. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, what, why are we crossing over and doing this cute stuff? And I like Miles Garrett. I do. I love what he can mean for the game, the type of athletic freak that he is, all those things. But if we're crossing somebody over, well, I'll say this: when Allen Iverson cro crossed somebody over, there was real results, wasn't it, DK? Yeah. Yeah. We're not getting that. So stop the cute – now, do your thing. Just do it against us, and let me see it. I don't know that I've ever seen anybody ask you this question. This is great. Hey, Moan, does anyone say anything to a player in the huddle after they just got flagged for a penalty that killed a previous play? Let's presume, adding on to that question, that it was a first down or a good gain. Yeah, I, I, it happens. It does. And I'll what do say, you say this. It, it's happened on our offensive line when it's a young dude. That okay, I got the most emphasis one inf uh infamous one for you. The everybody moved except for the center. BJ oh. got ripped on that one, and Did we let really? him have it. Yeah, we let him have it. It's usually uh, and it's usually old line to go after guys like that because that it's five that's got to work at one. BJ got ripped for that one. There's been other times where other young guys come in the huddle and you uh you, you just gotta kind of straighten them like we take this crap serious. So if you're going to be a starter for this week, we need you to be as serious as we are. And it's not just him. It was other young dudes that come into games and we could tell, oh, you didn't think you were going to play this week. So because of that, we let guys have it. Like that BJ play embarrassed all of us, but he was more embarrassed too, but it was still one of them situations. He didn't own up to it. He was like, well, I thought it was like, no, you didn't think. No, we no, all no, heard you didn't it, but think. you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you just got exposed pretty badly. Here. Yeah. And I <laughs> love my dude. became a living, breathing, eternal meme. You dude. know how often I get that sent to me in a tweet, uh, in a tweet, DK? Oh, my gosh. But BJ is a great dude, though, man. That was just one of them. You had a brain fart. But, yeah, that happens in the huddle at times. Still getting all kinds of commentary. Popcorn balls came up. Remember popcorn balls? I do. I didn't think they were still serving those. Well, I, I used to always think somebody made them. Uh, I did too, which is why I probably never ate them. Yeah. I don't want your handmade. I mean, I don't want your yeah, homemade I, stuff. I, I don't want anything that you made yourself. You know, yeah. that's just not right for Halloween. Yeah, you know, no, I want something that's, that's cheesy, processed, and really, really unhealthy for me. Exactly. I've never had this in my doggone uh, candy bag either. Clark bars. Never had that in my. Well, that's a Pittsburgh thing. Is that's it a really? Thing. Yeah, that was a Pittsburgh company. Oh, did not know that. Maybe we should take a tour. Uh, they were born here. Uh, they're not anymore. They're not here anymore. Eric says uh, these orange and black molasses candles are the about. worst. I don't actually. That it does is. not sound good. Yeah, I know what they're talking about. It was like a chewy one or whatever. Yeah, very much so. Uh, man, yeah. This oh, is... mallow cups. I'm not a marshmallow fan at all. Oh, these things, and I I fell prey to these things. They used to they used to give you these. They used to they used to give you these like little uh, things at the bottom that you collect them and. Try to you like if you had a hundred of them or whatever you yeah. could win like a rubber band or something. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and by the way, Tim is right. Even though he's not a member yet, come on, Tim, go ahead and get that membership, man. Yeah, Tussie Tim. roll pops rule for Halloween. Yes, they do. They will be at the end of the candy bag, but they are elite level too. Yeah, she's she's advocating almond joy. I'm violently allergic to almonds. I should are never really? say that to people because if you really hate my guts, you could kill me just by dropping an almond. We got to have an EpiPen somewhere, DK. We got to. Oh, yeah. Uh, Lee Smith says, thank you, guys. I uh, love the guy's show, and I listen every day driving home. That's really cool, Lee. Thank you. 
Yeah, it, absolutely. It, sometimes people will just give a shot like that. That's pretty nice, you know? No doubt, man. Uh, Rob Schreiner's choosing violence, DK. You want to see what he put up? I saw it. It's right here, yeah. Yeah. No, no, that ain't even it. It's even worse. Hey, Mo, did you ever tell anyone, go be a family man? Oh, <laughs> That's geez. disrespectful right there. That is disrespectful right there. Yeah, there's nobody that passes out the full repertoire quite quite, quite like TJ. Yeah. You know, I mean, he, he comes, whenever he has a line, he has a line that looks like that. It's yeah. not, hey, everybody, here's a line that only makes PFF happy. Yeah, no, absolutely not, man. Pass uh, rush win rate. Yeah, he's winning you know? all of it. Cowtails. My wife loves cowtails, DK. Oh, Wow, what is wrong with you two? I, I've had and it's just uh, it's mid. It's mid. When you have kids, you get stuck with watching on Nickelodeon that I don't like candy corn song that they would that they would show all the time. Have you ever seen this, Moan? Which one? I don't like candy corn. No, I hadn't seen that. Uh, one. Okay, maybe some of these other people will get that. The I, the I don't like candy corn song was the greatest. I, I never actually heard it. Was that, it was the best child song, even better than Wiggles. But the Wiggles greatest hits. Yeah, no, I never heard that, man. Absolutely not. Uh, All right, guys, this has been awfully random and everything else today. It has, but it's been good, man. I enjoyed this. Ah, oh, this is a good one too from my guy Jim. Yes, huh. Jim. We've answered this before, and every time you get motivated, he asks, Hey Moan, do you get motivated as a player by Renegade? Yes. You you gotta have chocolate as, in your veins. As an if offensive you don't. guy. Offensive yes. guy. Hell yeah, because something good was bound to happen, DK. Easily. The same thing that the fans feel is the same thing that the players do too. Boy, was it unbelievable at that last game. At that that I Ravens mean, game? Well, you, you add on to that that it because it led right into Miles Killebrew's block punt. Oh, stop. And everybody's like, wait, because you feel like you did it. Yeah. You're in the crowd. You feel like, <laughs> yeah, that was me. That was me right here. Look, look, look. You know? Did they play it again after that too? No. Oh. No. No. The, the double the double renegade's always a little weird for me. No, it's not. The double is I always love the double because that you means count, mo, not me. Momentum was going. Oh my gosh. Uh Holden supports me on the fact that there actually was an I don't like candy corn song. You guys can Google it. It's fantastic. The animation to it and everything. It's like one minute long. It's unbelievable that I don't I, like candy corn. It's for Moan. I got a good one after the break, DK, whenever we pull this thing back, man. I, you guys are already prepping for something, and it's got right. me nervous, DK. Let's do oh it. Oh, my gosh. Let's do it. You ready for it, DK? Uh, you are, as long as you acknowledge that Andrew thinks Sour Patch Kids are good. Well, they, they are good. Are. They're so good. Oh my god, they the gallery are. will not stop today. <laughs> the 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 ones, the only ones that I really don't get, like at all, like I don't understand them. There are people who swear by those juju bees and that that never you, had them. But you can't even consume them. They because just kind of sit in your mouth. It's like you just stuck your child's toy in your mouth. Oh, Plastic. Yeah. It takes forever for them to melt down. Yeah. Here's here's my go-to DK to kind of end this one, man, because I know this group is gonna be if they don't have tickets to the game, they're gonna find it. It's for this reason right here. Richard, who's has a great post show question. Hey Mo, will you still be motivated by Renegade on the second of November? What's wrong with y'all? DK, it's gonna be so many eyes, and I'll be on the opposite sideline doing my other job that We'll be looking like you. I don't think anybody say traitor, but they're gonna be looking <laughs> like, are you smirking? That's when the Titans come to come to Pittsburgh, and I gotta work the game. So this is gonna be very fascinating being on the other side of this. He's got to work the Tennessee sideline, and wait till you see that professional demeanor over there. Oh my! Ah, look! God. What is this silly song that they're playing here? <laughs> all, all every time they play Pittsburgh, it's like the third time they play Pittsburgh, though. I've always warned them. There's something different about that team. It, you don't want to hear Renegade be played. All I, I, I just try to play reporter, DK. Mm -hmm. This one is going to be fascinating. I will not. Because to come up there for the pit game like I did a couple years ago, last year, 
that's different. That's college, right? That's right. But to That's come right. to the NFL where I actually made my hay is kind of like, uh, yeah. You guys are tough. savage here, they man. Are. Bob Schreiner says Swedish fish if you have braces. That's terrible here. Uh, Pop Rocks. Oh, yes. my God. Yeah. Pop Rocks. The Pop Rocks are good. I, uh, I was Teresa's, a fan of the- Teresa's bringing oh, jawbreakers in. Yeah. Are they really? I always um, think of a. Well, uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory whenever jawbreakers are, are dropped into the bag because of the never-ending uh, gobstopper or whatever it was. Oh, there's 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 some stuff that's absolutely killer. I don't even know what zebra gum is. Oh, yeah, you do. The flavorless gum that you get three chews out of it, then it's gone zebra stripe. <laughs> yeah. That's quite the review. Wow. Yeah. Like, Jolly Ranchers, yeah. Fireballs, the Nerds. Socks. Zots. The gummies. Oh my gosh. Warheads. You, you guys have this is disintegrated. This Fruit everything. Stripe. We're 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 taking out children with this episode. Yeah, fruit stripe pigs. I've never been a big fan of that chalky gum, whatever it was, man. Gatorade, Gatorade. had a gum? Gatorade had a gum. This yeah, is true. right. Yeah. Didn't they I did. know that? Yeah. You, if you want to get in trouble for something, uh, Jerry, try smuggling Skittles into California now. <laughs> Are they illegal? They banned Skittles in California. That's hilarious. So I'm going to take they're... Skittles on my flight. <laughs> and if they frisk me on the flight, they'll be like, this guy's got Skittles. Yeah, no, it wasn't me. They were planted. Uh, I, hey, I'm with Ramel, too. I remember getting pennies for Halloween. I do remember that, too. Yeah, again, what was that? Yeah. Like those, are the, when you sort out the candy at the place after you're done, you just set that weird stuff off to the side, like there was a weird pile. Yep. I, this candy right here, Milky Way, I don't get why it's still being made. Who's voluntarily <laughs> eating it? <laughs> I'll have a piece, but I'm never picking one up out the store <laughs> ever. Oh, well. oh man. Jen is taking issue with our categorization of Skittles legality in California. <laughs> For now, I'm actually really a Nestle Crunch guy too. I'm, I'm there's there's nothing wrong with uh, with saying that. Back yeah. when I was allowed to have candy, which I'm not anymore. What? Yeah. Well, you had some candy last week when we did the show. Remember? No, I forgot this. <laughs> I'm oh, wait, By the way, yeah. ultimate ultimate way to tell you're from another generation was to acknowledge the presence of candy cigarettes. Oh my gosh. We used to yes. blow them like smoke. Yep. Yeah. Oh, what candy. a time that was, man. Candy cigarettes. Uh, I'm saying they didn't ban it. I'm also saying they banned it. Well, the ban isn't coming until 2027. Uh, Skittles has an issue in California. That's all I know. Yeah, Gino's making this up. One house used to give out little Turner teas. I think he's making that up. That would be that, that would be my house if I was doing it now. I'd just be passing out little Turner's iced teas. If we don't get full bars from you and Dolly for Halloween, we fight. We riot, okay? Right downtown where you live. Big League Chew was the crossover because it was tobacco. Big League Chew, was, it came in the form of a tobacco pouch, and you stuffed it in your mouth yeah, you like did. it was tobacco. Yep. I'll bet you that was all part of like the tobacco industry plan. It oh, was. Yeah. Candy cigarettes. Yeah, do that. Oh, the big league chew. Yeah, do that. Make them like the big league years. These are the worst. Circus the peanuts. Aren't they just for elephants? They're the worst. What do you mean they're the worst? I never heard of them. the worst thing ever. What's that? And everything. They win the worst candy ever. Circus wow. Peanuts. Okay. I never heard of it. Candy peanuts? Circus peanuts. Circus, Circus. peanuts. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Me either. Yeah, this we one told- right here was overrated too. Wax candy you used to get the fake teeth and then be able to chew on the wax too. I used to do that as a kid. You never had that? No. Oh, no. I was too busy awesome. munching on candy cigarettes. They weren't actually candy, by the way. Gum. They were was gum. gum. Yeah. yeah, they were gum. They were actually pretty good as, hey, as gum goes. Brian Faust, don't 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 crap on Boston baked beans. That, that that's an elite candy too. Okay. Boston baked beans are fire too. Okay, you can't have them all the time, but that is an elite candy too. The final word for the day goes definitely goes to Bob Schreiner, who says DK circus peanuts are like packaging material. Yeah. <laughs> That's fair. Bye, everybody. That's fair. See you guys. Bye bye. <laughs>